AT&T is a 30 year old company that have been writing software for sale yards uh, for the last 30 years. Right. Um, we advanced from the sale yard area to automation for the growing feedlot industry yeah. in that they needed a higher quality of recording and a higher quality of control over their animals and how their animals are handled. Right. Uh, uh, Leonard, you've used the uh, V as Mini ITX motherboard in, in your unit there. What was the main reason for that? Uh, smallness and its robustness. Okay. Uh, we started to use ITX computers uh, in the restaurant industry right. uh, and in the cattle yard industry where we placed the ITX computer in the back of the console unit here. Right. Um, we have them in sale yards over, all over the state. And the idea is that the box, stainless steel box, is complete. Uh, the unit can be then installed in any of the cattle yards mm -hmm. and operates. Never had a problem with that. Okay. The size of the unit, the way they work, uh, and the flexibility okay. of the units. This particular model here, we haven't got the ITX computer in the top mm -hmm. because it has a lot more control. Uh, mechanisms to go with it and so therefore the unit has been placed in a full IP65 control box. As you can see down here, you've got the computer, the power supplies, the remote controllers, the industrial controllers, all the relays and uh, fuses are all in the one box. That can be closed up and then it operates at the cattle yard. Now you're using Mini ITX at the moment and, and uh, complete PCs and you also mentioned to me that you're looking at using UMPCs in the future. How do you see implementing them into, into what you're doing? The major concern for UMPCs in this environment is a large producer who may have several sets of cattle yards which you can't move would like to take his one PC from yard to yard and then finally go home at night. Right. And so instead of having to duplicate uh, a console in each of the yards, he'll be able to put his UMPC. The other factor that's important to him about his UMPC is when he's in the paddocks and he's going through the paddock, he might see an animal that uh, is not doing as well as it should, uh, might have uh, a problem. He can then just touch into his UMPC that the next time this animal comes through the crush, he should get an extra dose of a certain set of vitamins or an extra mm -hmm. medical uh, requirement. So his ability to record everything around the paddock uh, is now increased greatly. How many times a year would uh, cattle go through a crush? Um, depends if you're in a uh, feedlot situation. Uh, you'd like to run your cattle through at least once every three weeks. If the animal is not performing, say putting on a kilo of beef a day, then you don't want to put him on high performance feed any longer. He's culled off and sold uh, to be grass fed and mature over a longer period of time. Um, so the controlling of them, the other thing is that you're looking at meeting very narrow meat specifications. A company like Woolworths are extremely uh, conscious of supplying a certain size steak uh, throughout their stores, so they want an animal that weighs between 400 and 450 kilograms. So every three weeks you're running all your animals through and peeling off those that are just coming into the specification range. Yeah. If you uh, don't look at your cattle regularly, then you're going to get a wider spread of the sizes of your cattle, and so therefore the product which they're putting on the shelf will vary. They want top quality, yep. and so they're saying he must have been fed on grain for at least 90 days, he's got to be in a certain weight range, and he's got to have been gaining a certain weight per day. In other words, he's a very healthy, very good animal, and he can be selected off uh, and sold as the premium grade of uh, animal and so by running your animals through you're checking how they're going and just drafting off those who are exactly ready for the market. Okay. The computer system allows you to tell it the rules the way you want to draft and then animals are running through we get about 250 animals an hour through automatically being weighed 
read and drafted off to the right categories. How long would that take manually if you didn't have one of these? About a hundred, you'd do about 150 an hour and make at least 5% of errors. Right. Okay, so you're eliminating a lot of errors? A lot of many, errors. Many right. So you, you were saying before that they, they, when they do it manually, they're literally writing it down on a notepad and then having to transcribe that back into a computer back at the farmhouse? Yes, a lot still right. are on manual systems and that leads to a massive error. Right. And you could be taking a good animal and uh, because you've written down the number wrongly, instead of him being for 30 kilos, you've written his, his 230 kilos. Mm -hmm. And so you said he's a dud, where actually he was a very good animal. Right, so you can actually lose a bit of money as well. You could lose a lot of money by making mistakes. Yeah. Um, the automation part of it, the beauty of the VIA computer, another reason why uh, it's so important to us is that it is a standard Windows based computer, so the programming of it is uh, in the commercial programming field as opposed to the industrial programming field and it's got PCI slots and so we have the benefit of having all the PCI driven uh, hardware as opposed to uh, USB driven hardware and USB is just nowhere near as good in its operation. So uh, the VIA has served us very well and we can use the, the PCI port in it. Right, okay. Now, I mean, we also spend a lot of time in development in developing low-powered, cool computing as well. Has that helped you all, at all with the design of the computer? In fact, we don't need large amounts of fans. Or, do they, these units get used in hot environments? Or? Not really. We only started around about minus seven in the morning on a cold morning and go up to 46 degrees on a hot afternoon. <laughs> so it's quite extreme type temperature range. Uh, very extreme, high, high dust levels. Uh, we've got to be reasonably careful of the water situation. That's why we put them in IP65 boxes. Uh, the IP65, is that a completely enclosed case? That's a enclosed case. Right, so no uh, air flow through there at all? Well, we can put air in it if we need from the compressed air system. Okay. okay. But if you take the uh, the most harsh boxes that we have, we've got eight units running the drafts um, at Wagga Salians. It's not uncommon for those computers to start in the morning at minus four. Um, and I've seen them sitting in the afternoon sun at around about 46 or 47 degrees uh, yeah. as the sun shines in and the, the tin box is getting really hot. Yeah. Yeah. And we've never had a, a physical problem with them at all.